And I think this is my position in, in space. I don't think I'm actually going to use this one. So that's what I'm going to use to generate my uh, bird feathers. Now, my bird feathers, uh, I don't want them. To, I'm not going to make them like, like, like ultra realistic bird feathers. I want them to be kind of fantastical. So what I said was I think I wanted them to be uh, like black with like gold, some sort of metallic gold accent. So we can we can we can figure out how to do that um, and learn some stuff in Substance Designer. So let's uh, let's jump over to Substance Designer and uh, and we'll get started. We'll see how far we can get. All right. So uh, I got some designer open here, and I want to make sure I keep this. I'm gonna keep this open because I'll use those later. Okay, so I'm going to say file a uh, new package, and I'm gonna say new substance graph, and I'm gonna call this uh, feathers. Um, and then 4096 by 4096 is fine. And then I'm going to use a uh, metallic roughness preset. So it's going to give me base color, normal, roughness, metallic, height, and ambient occlusion. Now there's a bunch of other different uh, um, presets in here, but um, this is the one that you're that I use uh, pretty much 99% of the time. 4K is fine. And uh, yeah, so we'll say okay. And so we get this. Uh, <clears throat> so this is if uh, you've never used so um, let me let me back up a little bit um, so a lot of I know especially when I first started um, substance designer really like I didn't understand like what it was like I didn't get it um, it was just like this weird package with like all these nodes and these graphs and stuff and I was like what, what like what's the point um, in general like the substance tools like substance designer uh, substance painter and then also by you know by extension um substance alchemist or I, I think that they've changed the name of it to substance sampler i believe um they're supposed to work in conjunction with with one another so uh substance painter like you can think of any material as a substance like uh like plastic is a substance metal is a substance glass is a substance skin is a substance so substance by that by that nomenclature, substance designer is generally for uh, designing substances. It's for making like oh beat up wood or or, or like aged wood or uh, tiles or stuff like that, right? And then within so that that makes a substance uh, archive, right? Or like a SASBR. That substance can then be taken and used in several different places. Uh, the the prime place it's used is Substance Painter. So when you're in Substance Painter and you have like these these grunges where you have all these parameters that you can move around or like the the metals that are that are just kind of baked in and things like that, all those are 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 substances that that you know algorithmic and, and now Adobe because they've been bought by Adobe have authored and preloaded with so uh, with Substance Painter. Um, the other way you could use a substance. Uh, Substance um, uh, Archive is if you have the Substance plugin for you know Maya or Houdini or now Blender, uh, they just released the Substance plugin for Blender. Um, so basically, what that is is it's a node inside of whatever that digital content package is, and you load in that archive, and then you have all the functionality of oh, I want more tiles or less tiles, or I want more water or less water, I want it to be clean or dirty. Um, you have all those procedural sliders within your digital content packages. Now, I tend to, you know, just use images. Like I usually, I usually just bake out um, my uh, my um, my texture swatches, my repeatable texture swatches, and use those um, just because the overhead is less. But you know, um, the sky's the limit when you when you think about it that way. Um, okay, so this is what we have, and if we really if we're really looking at this, really. Um, there's nothing really magical going on inside of this thing. It's really just an image editor. It's an image editor with, uh, it's a node-based image editor um, with some, some bells and whistles on it to make it more user-friendly for texturing. And that's what I feel like a lot of, where a lot of your value comes in when you're using um, like 4Pay software as opposed to, you know, like quick, uh, uh, um, What's the other one? Uh, Armor Paint or uh, 
or Blender or some of these other free kind of software packages, yeah, they work. They're doing, they're all doing the same stuff, but it's the, you're, what you're paying for is the, um, you're paying for the, the convenience, basically. You're paying for the UX and the UI uh, that you get from from you know experts uh, and engineers that are putting putting the time into into building that stuff. So yeah, um, cool. Where do I want to go with this? Okay, so uh, we have our. I'll just do a quick review uh, or overview um, for anyone who has never used uh, some designer before. Uh, I'm a little rusty myself. Uh, this will be very very basic super basic functionality of Substance Designer, but it'll get you, it'll get you, it'll get you far enough to, you know, to be dangerous, right? So you have your, your, uh, your content browsers over here. So this has all your, the nodes that you could ever want. Um, tons of grunges, tons of generators, you know, there's, uh, tons of grunge maps, uh, beautiful, like, caustics here. Um, so all this can be used, these generators, you can generate tile, you can generate weave, things like that. Um, just like in Substance Painter, we have a 3D view here and a 2D view here. Um, so right now, all these outputs here are being viewed in the 3D viewport here. So we have this, this little uh, rounded cube here. So uh, I have a base color, which is flat gray, uh, flat normal, um, middle ground roughness. What is this? This is a uniform color. It's about uh, 0.25 rough. Um, no, it's not metallic at all. And it is. it has no ambient inclusion. Now, one other thing I want out of this is uh, opacity. So opacity doesn't come in with this. So these are my outputs, and I can tell that these are my outputs, and they're being viewed in the 3D view because it has like this little 3D cube by it. So all these little guys have this 3D cube by it. So if I were to go and take uh, this base color and make it like a, let's do that Pixar blue that everybody likes to do. I should find the, the exact RGB values of that Pixar blue. I know it's out there somewhere. And then um, if we want it less rough, we can change these values. Okay, and you can see that there's a there's a HDRI in here. So when I turn that roughness down, you can actually see the reflection. Now you can use different uh, different meshes to preview in here. So if you go to scene, you can do a cube, you can do a cylinder, uh, you can do a, what else? Cylinder, hollow box, inner box, plane, plane, high res. Um, oh, they've they've added some ones. So this material ball here. So they just took meat Matt's head, and uh, and did that. So this is for like general authoring. You can also use your own your own custom uh, meshes in here, which I'll show you how to do here in a minute. Um, so uh, so I need to make uh, opacity in here. So what I'm going to do is these are outputs, right? These outputs are what your what's going to be spat out or rendered when if I right click on here and I say uh, export outputs as bitmaps, so that's what it's going to spit out. So it's going to spit out this base color and blah blah blah. So I need another output in here uh, for my opacity. So generally, what I'll do, and this is a special uh, node. This is an this is literally an output node. So if we look um, uh, height properties. Yeah, this is an output node. So what I'll do is I'm just going to first thing, I'm just gonna just copy control C, control V. Okay, so this guy, this identifier, I'm gonna call opacity. And then down here, uh, yeah, here we go. My usage, so my components is gonna be RGBA. Actually, I don't want that, I want that to be yeah, RGBA usage is going to be opacity. Let's make sure O P A C I T O P A C I T Y. And then my color space is should be I don't want it to be linear. Oh, I don't have to put that in there. It will figure it out on its own. Because I don't think any of these have their own other color spaces either. Okay, cool. So so that gives me my, my opacity. And if I take a uniform color, let's see. So I need to view this in let's do color, let's do grayscale. Let's 
So if I want to view this in my in my 3D view, I right click and I say view in 3D view. And I'm going to plug that into opacity. So now I can control the opacity of my little meat bat head here. Um, let's see, group material, label. Let's put that label as opacity as well. Oops. So opacity, opacity, that's the label that we're seeing here. Uh, format is default and components RGBA, opacity, Okay, cool, great, awesome. So we'll put this back up to one. So that's fully opaque. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I just wanna set up a base material because a lot of this stuff is, uh, it's really, I find it really annoying to like keep trying to reconnect all these bits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down my first node here and I'm just gonna say, give me, and I'm gonna press tab and I'm gonna say base material. So my base material, you can see, has pretty much all the same output. So it has a base color, a normal, a roughness, metallic, a height, and an ambient inclusion. What it doesn't have, it doesn't have an opacity. So that is, that's just something that we'll have to deal with uh, down here. So my opacity is just kind of off on its own, like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, these pins. So I can take each one of these pins and plug them in like that. So I can plug into each one in on its own, or I can move this to being like this material mode and I can just grab this and it'll try to do its best to connect all that stuff in, right? So I don't need these constants anymore. Oops. that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, and uh, height, yeah, oh yeah, there's my, there's my opacity, down there. make sure all this stuff is going to the right spot, that's height, ambient inclusion, so not really sure why these are, are flipped, but there we go, and then my opacity is down here. So the reason I do this is, uh, oh, hey, uh, Henry Chima. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. Uh, so the reason I do this is because I can, I can, I can expose um, down here. I can say user-defined uh, color, normal, roughness, metallic, all that stuff, right? Um, so I can expose all that stuff. Uh, as, as I expose it, it will, it will get built. So the first thing I wanna do is I don't want to because I'm I'm building these feathers, uh, we're just building them on a flat plane, so I'm just gonna say scene. I'm gonna say uh, plane high res. Okay. All right. So these are my outputs that I, that I'm gonna make. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to bring in my uh, these maps here. So I want uh, my alpha. I want my ambient occlusion. I want my B box. I want maybe my mask. Don't know if I'm gonna need that. Uh, oh, what happened here? That was weird. Uh, my mask, my random, my U, my normal, and I think I'm gonna leave off position for now. So I think I'm just gonna drag these in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import them. So you can import your bitmaps or you can link them. Um, linking is kind of like referencing, like it's gonna, you know, keep a, uh, they don't actually get imported into the project. They're, they're linked to your, your meshes on, 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 uh, on disk. Also, if I was going to do a bunch of editing of those images and I wanted to see their result within substance, then I would, I would, I would link them, but, um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm really going to change those, those maps that much. So I'm just going to import. So I'm going to say import bitmap and I'm going to go grab grab those those so my opacity my ambient occlusion my uh, 
feather. Mask, random, link view, normal. I think that's it. Yeah, so I'm gonna say open. All right, so now I have this resources folder and yeah, so I have all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna say file, save, overwrite that. Okay, so now this is uh, this SBS file. Uh, so the SBS file, it's like a .ma file or a .mb file or a .hip uh, file. So it's just a native file for for Substance Designer. Um, okay, so the first thing, that, well, let's do the easiest ones first. So my alpha, I can pretty much just hook straight in. Now, uh, one thing that we need to look at is, uh, so my alpha channel is yellow. And this guy is gray. So yellow in Substance Designer denotes um, colored images, right? It has a red, a green, and a blue channel. Um, it also has grayscale images, which is just one channel, right? So I need to convert this bitmap into a grayscale image. So there, there's a, a way to do that. So we can have this guy here, grayscale conversion, because we do this so much, right? It's very, very easy to just convert this over. And then you have channel weights and you can have flatten alpha and you have all this stuff. But really all I need to do is just take this black and white image and actually make it truly a black and white image and I'll plug that in there. So now I get my opacity. So I got like this cookie cutter, like cutout of my feathers. Pretty cool. Uh, Lindell Tim, greetings. Do you need to know how to draw for three modeling and to use ZBrush? Um, I get that question a lot. Uh, I would say yes. Now, it is a different type of drawing. Do you have to be able to, you know, pencil a comic book or draw a beautiful picture? No, no, you don't. But do you need to know how? Do you need to how? Do you need to know how to describe form in a, a two-dimensional arena, be it in Photoshop or Krita Studio Paint or on pencil and paper or charcoal or whatever, um, you know, can can you do that? Can you make that kind of like mental leap and 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 be able to describe three forms in a 2D medium? Uh, so in that case, yes. Um, I am not the greatest draftsman on the planet, but I, you know, I can draw, I can draw the anatomy of an arm, I can draw the anatomy of a torso, I can draw the anatomy of a head. And one will lead to the other. So as you get better as your draftsmanship gets better, your 3D modeling will get better and vice versa. So they kind of, it's all like, just kind of like you're, you're, you're working out an artistic muscle. Um, it would be like saying, it's like, oh, well, I'm a swimmer, so I don't need to, you know, do squats. Like, because, you know, I'm swimming all the time and I'm just using, you know, my arms. Uh, it's the same thing, right? Like if you're a swimmer, you need to you need to train your legs. Even though you're primarily using your arms, you know, you still need to train your legs, you still need to train your chest, you still need to train your cardio. So like all these things kind of make you a rounded, you know, professional. So yes, you need to I would say yes, you should learn to draw, um, to some extent. Do you need to be like, you know, the next Leonardo da Vinci or Kim Jong Ji or, you know, uh, Frank Cho? No. No, you don't. So hopefully that that, that helps. Um, okay, so I can get rid of this. So there's my opacity. Uh, so my grayscale, or sorry, so my um, my normal map, I'm actually just gonna plug directly into my base material. So I'm gonna say uh, user-defined maps, I'm gonna say normal. And I'm gonna bring in my normal here. And we're gonna plug that in there. So now we get my little, my ridges that I had So that's working really well. So this this is this is fantastic. It's already working very very well. Okay. So next one is uh, would be my uh, I mean inclusion. So we'll hook that up. So once again, I need a grayscale conversion because this is my ambient inclusion. Get grayscale conversion. So 
that gives us that. Now, if I didn't have, so this is one of the really, whoa, oh, oh wow, they made that malleable now. That's pretty cool. It's new. Um, so if I didn't have my ambient occlusion map, one of the great things about uh, Substance Designer is that, um, is that, uh, is that um, you can generate your ambient occlusion from your normal map, which is actually really cool, right? So I can press tab and say, uh, AO, normal. So we have a normal map to height here. Uh, we have a normal map to height HQ. And I think there's a height to AO. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in, I'm gonna say this normal height. So that gives me a height map here. Um, and so let's, uh, let's, let's edit this a little bit because this is a little muddy. I'm not gonna end up using the height map, but some of the other things, some of the, some other things you can generate are based on a height map. So let's see. Yeah, this is mostly high frequency detail. Yeah, there we go. And this one is really, really small. So I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to get out of this overall, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure out, we'll, we'll see. I'm gonna just gonna press that up and put it down. Cool, so in here, I can also, once again, come down and say do do do, turn on my height and plug in my height here. Hi, pizza, how are you doing? So that doesn't really change much. Um, and we're mostly gonna be using the normal map, but it's always good for, for the sake of completion. We are, we'll leave that there. Now, uh, for whatever reason, I really don't like these kind of like Bezier um, wires and such. Uh, so what I can do is um, I can make them a little bit harder. So, or not a little bit harder, but I can change the wire style up here. I can just click that. So I, I tend to like this type of style. Some people like the other style. It doesn't affect your, your output or whatever. Uh, but um, I just like, I like the uh, kind of like the precision of, it looks like a, like a circuit board. Um, uh, I think if you press, yeah, if you press shift and alt, you can make like a little dot. So I can click. Where is it? So I used to be able to make dots in here and kind of move this stuff around, but it doesn't look like it's, ah, oh, there we go. So it's just, it's just uh, alt. So I can make dots to kind of redirect a lot of this stuff. All right, so there's my my height. Here's my, uh, let's go ahead and put a dot here. Put that, move that down there. And actually, I think that one's okay. I'm gonna do that one. How are you doing, Nicholas Media? I don't know what's going on uh with you but please don't spam the uh the um the stream please unless you have something really nice to say otherwise we'll have to uh ask you to leave um okay so uh oh hello marvin cow how are you doing good to see you good to see you thank you for the uh thank you for the compliments okay where was i all right so i have my uh my normal map my height map my amity occlusion and uh, so what do we have next? Let's, what are we gonna work on next? Uh, uh, ah, roughness. That's what I wanna work on next. So my roughness, I'm going to derive from, uh, from my length U map. Now this length U map, uh, I'm actually gonna take a step back because a lot of what we do um, to 
of the most important uh two of the most important maps that you can build within substance are your uh roughness map and your normal map now our 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 um our normal map has already been taken care of by uh our normal map has been taken care of by you know Houdini but I want to build my, my a custom roughness map and that's why I put all that work into building the very trying to craft these uh, these black and white images um, so that they're 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 very specific and I'll I'll, I'll show you why because a lot of the stuff we do is in black and white values so I'm gonna start just to show you what some of the some of the tools I'm gonna use uh, do I'm just gonna make a gradient uh, let's say gradient map actually we'll do uh, gradient linear. So, all color, all color in CG is based on 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 black and on black and white values, right? You have your red channel, which goes from no red to all red. You have your green channel, which goes from all green to no green, and then you have your blue channel, which goes from all green to or all blue to no blue. And we we combine these things together, and uh, and that makes that gives us a, a red, green, and blue image. Now, if we're just working on just one value, what we call a scalar value, right? Um, we're, it's just black and white data, right? So, and this is why in recent years, uh, you might, some of you may not know this, um, you might not be old enough to know it. If we look, most of these inputs, this is grayscale, this is grayscale, this is grayscale, this is grayscale. The only two inputs that are not grayscale are my actual color and my normal app. Because this makes it much easier. It's just less data that I have to pull around. Like if this was color, I'd have, uh, so with this model, I have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 channels of information, okay? Um, if these were all color, I would have three, six, nine, 12, 15, I would have 18 channels. So it's just, le it's less data that you have to deal with. And the less data you have to deal with, the easier things get, right? It's much, much easier to, um, to build uh, one channel than three, or to deal with one channel than three. Okay. So if I just plug this guy, uh, oh no, that's what I was going. Okay. So how do we manipulate this, right? So there's a couple of different uh, tools that we can use to manipulate this. So uh, and they're named very strangely. I think it's like histogram. It's the histogram tools. Okay. Uh, I don't know why they don't call them grayscale, but they call them histogram. So uh, there's a, a histogram range, scan, uh, scan non-uniform, select, and shift. So the ones that I usually use, oh, and there's levels. Levels is probably the most powerful one out of all of them. So let's start with that actually, because it's so powerful they just put it up here. And curves. So is this, is that roto shape or curve? That's SVG, where are my Okay, so if I look at levels, and this is the same tools as you would use in Photoshop, right? There's a levels tool in Photoshop, there's a curves tool in Photoshop. They do exactly the same thing, right? Um, and this will work with any grayscale image. So along with this uh, gradient, uh, I will do a, let's do a gradient circular, gradient radial, there we go. So I'll demonstrate on this guy and on this guy. Okay, so uh, if we look at levels, this is how this breaks down, right? Um, this is my black point, right? The black point says anything below this value will become black, right? So right now this black point is set at zero, which is at the bottom here. So everything below zero becomes black, which doesn't really make any sense because there isn't really anything below zero. But if I take this, and this is the thing I don't really like about substance. I wish I could put just put in a number here. Like I have to like guess. Um, so I wish I could like put in like 0.5 or 0.2 or whatever. Um, but so if I bring this up, so you can see that black, this, and this is why we call this the black point. Like everything below this line becomes black, right? So I pull this all the way up. Everything below that line will become black. Conversely, my white point here, everything above that line is going to become white. So everything abo above this 
So here is going to become white. And that's why I usually show this stuff when I'm teaching, actually even when I'm doing on-ground classes, when I'm doing webinars, stuff like that, when I'm teaching this stuff, I try to like show you the very, very basic stuff first and then implement it into, into the actual project. Now it takes a little bit longer to teach, but in the long run you get a better understanding, or at least when I was, when I was learning, you get a better understanding of, of what's happening. Because a lot of tutorials are like, use this, use that, use this, use that, and you don't really know exactly what it's doing because it had the the concept hadn't been hasn't been abstracted for you so this is the abstractional concept and then I'll, I'll show you um i'll show you it on on the linear gradient the radial gradient and then um because this is just a black and white value um it will work on this as well so white point black point this middle one here is called gamma, right? So if I, what this does is it shifts that middle gray. It shifts the middle gray around. So if you look at this line right here, it's like a rubber band. If I'm like, I'm like pulling that part of that rubber band around. So notice my blacks don't change and the whites don't change, but the grays in here in the middle get pushed around. Okay, so I can push this all the way that way. I can push that all the way that way. Okay, so this is, they call this, you can call this midpoint, you can call this gamma, you can call this gray point. Um, you know, whatever. Okay, so the closer these two, your white point and your black point become, the more contrast you're gonna get out of out of your uh, out of the output here. So, so that's great. Uh, once again, black point, gamma, white point. Now, what do these two things down here do? These are my output. This is my output black. And this is my output white. This says what color will black become. And this says what color will white become. So if I start to pull this up, you'll see this black part here, down here, start to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay. So now my output black is like, you know, uh, probably like 0.25. Same thing here, right? With my output white. If I bring this down, it's not now outputting white. It's now outputting some, some gray value. Okay. So that's, that's the levels. So if I plug in this guy, so right, that's, that's my basic, that's my base uh, um, radial, if I plug this into here. So I get the same thing, right? So I can move this around. So that's that outer edge. That's my gamma moving the 50% moving the around. And this, this is my output black. And this is my output white. And by default, it doesn't really do anything. If I put this back to 0.5, then that works. Okay, so same thing. It's all just black and white data. Okay, so same thing with my my feather. So for this, my feather, once again, that's a color output. I need to make it a grayscale output. So if I plug that into my levels, same thing. So I can move that middle bit. In and out so this is why I was so like this is where it really starts to pay off I can move this middle bit in and out like that right so if I want my my tips to be more rough and my uh, my ends my but inner part to be uh, less rough I can do that um, I can invert this stuff I think I can invert this so if I go uh, I don't think it's letting me invert it I'll probably need to do a different node than that but so I can increase contrast I can decrease contrast um, if I don't want my output black to be 100% black I can pull this in. If I don't want my output white to be 100% white, I can pull that in. All right. So that's that's going to drop contrast. Same thing. Okay. So levels is your definitely your best one of your, one of your best friends. Okay. So that's levels. That's the ins and outs. Whoa. Oh yeah, we're just, um, I took, I've taken the, the images that I put out of Houdini last time and I brought them into uh, Substance Designer and I'm doing the, uh, the texture for the individual feathers. So I've fed in the normal map, the height map, and I believe the, what else did I do? Normal, height, and ambient occlusion maps into, uh, 
into my base shader here. And so now I'm going to be working on my, my roughness. All right. So now we have our curves. So the curves basically does the same thing, right? So if I take this guy, yeah, right here, and if I'm back to here, so the curve does pretty much the same thing, right? This is my black point. This is my white point. So if I want my, there we go. So this is my black point. As I bring this up, okay, so I'm bringing that up. So it basically does the same thing. It just does it in a different really visually manner, right? So this is my, this is my, so this is my black point. So anything under 0.32, let's put this at right at 0.5, right? Anything under 0.5, and I wonder if I can make this, yeah, I can make this linear, there we go. So anything under 0.5, right, that becomes black. And then here, my output black, if I want this to be 0.5 there, so now that becomes 0.5. Same thing with my output, my white here, that's my white point, and then that's my output white. Okay. Now the cool thing about this is because it's a curve, I can make multiple kind of entries into this. So I can put, do something like this. And along with this, I can also break these tangents as well. So with the, with the, um, with the, uh, oh man, I can't talk today. With the levels, right, I, I was kind of stuck with linear tangents. So now I can actually break this just like you would in, you know, Adobe Illustrator. And I can make these really cool, like, sawtooth patterns. Right, so you can do, I've, I've used this, so if you look at, if you imagine this, if you were looking at it from the side, if I were to take this, if you were thinking about it like a height map, right, and I looked at this from the side, this is what it would look like. If I turn this on its side and then cut it in half, right, that's what, that's what this would look like. So this gives you a lot of power, especially when you start plugging in other shapes other than a linear ramp. So if I do this, I get this really cool kind of like wheel effect. And if I do it with my feathers, I get something like the solarized effect. Actually, that's really cool. <laughs> I kind of like that. That's a really cool uh, linear design. So that's the kind of like a little cool little happy accident. So you can get this, this pretty amazing control if you just know a little bit about, you know, how, how your images are constructed. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so those are the those are the, the, the levels and then the, uh, the curve. So the rest of the ones, I don't know why this keeps doing this. Uh, so the rest of them are those histogram ones. They, they, they're basically all doing a version of this. They're just kind of like uh, um, convenience functions. So I'm going to go to atomic nodes and let's see. Uh, nope. Let's do... So there's a histogram range. So let's look at that one. Okay, so this range, it, it's basically doing um, just an overall range. So it's saying my position, like my position is zero, it's getting rid of everything. If my position is one, it's bringing everything back. So at 0.5, so I can basically push my ends around. All right, so you can see that, that, that middle part. I don't really use this one because I mean, maybe, I don't know. Um, I haven't really found it a, a really powerful use for this one, but it's pretty cool. Uh, now the scan does exactly what it looks like, uh, what, it sound, what it sounds like. It gives me, it gives me a position, right? And it's scanning through that position, right? So it's saying, it's scanning, so at zero, it's saying scan nothing. And then at 0.5, it's gonna give me half, and then one, it should give me white. So you can see it kind of does like this wiping effect. Right, so at zero, there's nothing. At 0.5, it's all the way down. And then from 0.5 to one, it kind of pushes up the bottom. So if I wanted to contrast up towards the top or the bottom, 
I could do that with this one node. Now for this, I would probably just, because this is so strange and unwieldy, um, I can also, if I put my contrast all the way up to one, you can see what it's doing. It just kind of scans all the way down. So if I wanted a hard cutoff for something, I could use a histogram scan. Uh, sure, Sandeep, go ahead, fire away. I'm gonna keep talking and then uh, I'll answer your question when you ask. So, so yeah, if I wanted a hard a hard line on this, I could use that, so this histogram scan. Um, let's see, what is this, non-uniform. Uh, one thing I am gonna use a lot is this histogram select. So what this does is it says, okay, this is my position and this is the range. So it's at 0.5 and it's going 0.25 up and 0.25 down. And as I move this position around, that little kind of laser bar is gonna move. And then once again, if I pull my contrast up like that, it's gonna get me like that. So scan and range are kind of the same. Like scan just kind of goes uh, one way and range goes uh, two ways. And then shift. So shift just pushes it around, like it does like a repeater. All right, cool. So with all that in mind, and I can use this on, you know, so there's that, there's my range, there's the, this is scan. So there's my histogram scan. Uh, this is my select. Just like that. And then um, this is my offset. It's pretty cool. You make like this kind of like iris, iris effects. Okay. Uh, I'm from India and I don't have professional institutes where I can learn Houdini. Do you recommend any other ways except leaving the country? Um, I don't think you have to leave the country. Um, there is so much, so much information on the internet right now. Um, and I get this, I probably get this, this question almost every other stream and <laughs> pretty much every time I do a talk about like computer graphics and teaching computer graphics, um, people are like, Oh, I don't have, I don't have, should I go to, should I go to art school or should I, you know, should I go to a vocational school or should I leave my country? Should I do this? Should I do that? Um, I don't think you have to leave your country. Like we live in the, like we live in quite literally the information age. There is so much information out there and a lot of it is free. Um, so much of it is free. Uh, and there's even some that's, that's for pay. That's less than, you know, a university or a professional institution. You know, you have Goma and you have Noma and you have, haha, -ha, CG spectrum. Of course, you know, you can do that from anywhere. You can take our classes from anywhere. Um, you know, you have so many other, you have so many avenues, YouTube, Vimeo, um, discord meetups. Uh, there's so much, there's so much information out there. There's really the only excuse that you have if you're really really passionate about something about not learning that thing is you um and a lot of people don't want to hear that they want to like, they want to make excuses and they're like oh I, there's no there's nothing here for me or blah, blah 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 right if you really want to do something you will figure out a way to do it um and if you let things get in your way like then you probably probably didn't want to do it that much um so like there, there's there's always a way to do something May, and that way might be not be the best it might be suboptimal but there's always a way there's always always a way once again um like what do you uh it depends on what you define as you know proper guidance um you know google you can google most of your problems on on like the internet you can uh, post your work on, on, on forums. You can post your work on ArtStation. You can post your work on Oddforce. You can post your work on, um, you know, if you really want to learn Houdini, you can post your work on, uh, on, on the actual Houdini forums. There are tons of digital art forums out there where you can be like, hey, you know, can you critique my art? Now, with that, you're going to have to take that critique that you're getting back with a grain of salt. Right, because you don't know if these people are just you know having a laugh or if they're actually qualified. So that's that's something you're gonna have to deal with. But you know, it will take time, right? Um, and you have to be passionate about it, and you have to keep digging and keep going and keep digging. Um, there's no magic button. 
uh, there's no like tutorial that you're gonna watch or YouTube channel you're gonna subscribe to or you know college you're gonna go to that's gonna magically make you uh, make you an artist right like it, it, it takes time and it takes practice I, I get a lot of students that um, uh, they're like oh I watched all these tutorials and I did these tutorials and like I just did the tutorial exactly how they told me to do it and I got exactly what they told me to do and I'm applying for jobs and I'm not getting any jobs right because employers don't want people who can just follow tutorials employers want creative thinkers more than anything that's the most important thing I mean beyond you know beyond all this stuff that we're showing all the technology and the screens and you know Maya and Houdini and ZBrush and all that stuff employers I mean they want you to know these things but what's more important is that you can you can problem solve that you can look at a problem that you haven't had before figure out what's in your toolbox and solve that problem that is that is probably the most important thing that you can that you can cultivate as someone who's learning CG and just in life um, like that process never stops there's never a point or at least for me where I've been like, well, I've learned everything, I'm done. Like, that that never, ever, ever happens. It never happens. You are continually learning and growing and changing and learning new stuff. Like, for example, like this, like, Substance Designer didn't exist when I was in school at all. And there was no one to teach me to do it. So I just kind of, you just have to figure it out. Like, I made a lot of really ugly substances that I didn't show anybody. Because you don't have to show every, everybody everything you make. We live, once again... Um, we're in this kind of information age where everybody needs to like post what they had for breakfast and their sandwiches and their walks and their you know when they're having a bad like it, you don't have to like if you make something that sucks don't show it to anybody <laughs> and then figure out why it sucks and then make something else and try to make it a little bit better and that one will suck a little bit less and then you figure out why that one sucks and you make another one and maybe that one will suck a little bit less you keep doing that that process over and over and over until you make something that that kind of doesn't suck and then you can show it to people and they'll be like, whoa, oh my God, how did you do that? Blah, 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 blah. And then you can be like, well, this, I did this, that, and the other, right? So that's that's the process. That's the process. Um, where was I? Okay, yeah, roughness map. So, um, so let's get rid of this stuff. This is all just for, just for show. And let's get back to this guy. Okay, so my roughness map, I said I wanted it to be uh, quite rough in the middle and kind of shiny on the edges. So I need to invert this. Um, so we'll do invert grayscale. Okay, that's good. That's a good. That's a good first step. Um, have you shown it to anybody? You know, uh, it's always great, good to, to to show your words. Like, hey. You know, uh, go on, you know, go on art station, go on, just be like, Hey, um, I know you're busy. Can you take like five minutes to look at my, my, my YouTube channel? And, uh, and some people will be like, yeah, sure. Blah, blah, blah. I'll do it. No one will be like, how dare you ask me to, to watch, to look at your stuff. And if they do, they're probably terrible people. Like very, very few people in our industry and in this industry are like super high on themselves. I think, and I, I went through this a, a, as well when I was a student, I wish I would have reached out more to professionals when I was a student. Because at the very least, or at the very, not the very least, at the very worst, they ignore you, right? They get this spam, they're like, oh, this is spam, I'm not going to look at that, blah, blah, blah. They chuck it in there, like, you just don't hear anything back. No one's going to email you back and be like, how dare you contact me, blah, 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 blah. So at the very, very worst, they totally ignore you, which puts you at, you know, square one. You haven't gone backwards, you haven't gone forwards, but you haven't gone backwards. Um, maybe they'll be like, oh yeah, thanks for, you know, you know, liking my work, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't really have time to do this right now. So you're still at square one. At the very best, they say, hey, you know, fix this, fix that, fix this, fix that. You know, this, this could be better. That could be better. This is terrible. Uh, and at the very worst, they're like, this is awful. This is terrible. You should give up your job. Never do this again. You don't have the, you don't have the guts for this, right? No, I very, very rare. Like, I don't think anyone's ever, ever going to do that because we're, you know, we're tribal. We're like up here. Like in our brain, we're we're pretty tribal people, so we don't like you know hurting people unless you're like a sociopath or something. Um, that's good. That's good. Always keep applying for jobs, man. Keep swinging the bat, and it also depends on where you're applying, right? Um, if you're first starting out, and uh, this is also I feel like this is just becoming like a hard truth uh, stream. If you're first starting out, you're not gonna get a job at like ILM or Pixar or Sony or something. 
right? Uh, try just spray and spray. Find like a tiny, you know, five man studio that does commercials and then work there for a little bit and then, you know, work your way up there and then like apply for something else and apply for something else and apply for something else, right? There's so much of this work out there and so few people who can actually do it. Um, yeah, it's it, like, it, you just have to, you have to pick your battles. Definitely have to pick your battles. Okay, so this is my roughness. Um, so I tend to not like things to be 100% uh, white or 100% black. So this is where my levels come in. So I'm going to grab my levels and I'm going to bring my black point up. I really wish there was a number here. So let's bring our black point up to here. And put it down here. Okay. So I'm going to plug this guy into my roughness here. You should see that update there. Just make sure. Plug it into, yeah, that's completely normal. So yeah, so we're starting to get this look. Um, let's see, do, 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 do. Okay. Let's bring, um, let's bring this white value way down. Cause I do want them to be pretty shiny overall um if you're looking for internships uh and you don't know where to find them you can probably like uh you know there's the there's a there's the standard channels there's you know there's linkedin there's vfxjobs.com. I don't even know if that's still up. Uh, there's, yeah, there's LinkedIn, there's vfxjobs.com. There's Animation World Network. There's uh, Creative Heads. Um, uh, Creative Heads is a great uh, website. It uh, it specializes in just visual effects and graphics work. Where else? Um, there's ArtStation has a jobs portal. CG Channel, uh, or is it CG Channel? Yeah, CG Channel has, has a jobs portal. What else? Uh, yeah, those are the five big ones, right? Like you just keep have you have to just keep going back and keep going back and send keep sending stuff out and keep sending stuff out and keep sending stuff out. And eventually, something will land. Something has to land eventually. Um, so yeah, so just keep at it. It it can be disheartening. I think I sent around three to four hundred uh, applications to internships when I was when I was in school before I actually landed. Uh, landed a gig so it's, it's gonna take time it's not gonna be immediate you just have to be very patient and in the meantime just keep working just keep working on your craft keep building your craft and it, it'll eventually land it will okay so there's my roughness uh, I'll deal with that actually you know what the other thing I want to do let's, let's go ahead and, and use uh, this uh, this feathers rand so this feathers rand is what I can use to give myself some variation between each one of these little strips. Okay. So what I want to do is so I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to do a grayscale conversion. Now this is this one you'll actually see the the, the grayscale convert because it's a color and I'm going to grayscale. So bang like that. So if I want, so right now it's just basically just taking the luminance of the whole thing. If I wanted just my red channel, I could take my green and my blue and pull that down. So that now that's just red. Um, but I think I like the the overall kind of speckliness of this. So I need to come. I want to combine. Ugh, that is terrible. I want to combine like this data with this data. Right. So, and this is just like, uh, just like in Photoshop, right? This is a layer and this is a layer and I want to use a blending mode to confine them. So I'm going to use a blend. So I'm going to say tab blend. Okay. So we have a foreground and a background. So I'm going to take my background here and plug it into here and here and plug it in here. Now, uh, by default, this is just layering this. It's just layering this guy on top of that guy. So that's what copy is. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to change my blending mode. I'm going to say like maybe multiply. 
feeling pretty good. And I can take my opacity, and my opacity will basically fade out the foreground. I can do that. So now I'm getting, now I'm gonna get, uh, let's see. So maybe not multiply, maybe that's a little hard. Maybe like uh, max lighten. Yeah, I think I like that a little better. So I want just a bit of uh, a variation in my roughness value. So some of the strands will be a little bit shinier. Some of the strands will be a little bit less shiny, I guess you could call that. So let's take this guy, plug it into that guy. And so it's really subtle, but when you're when you're texturing, subtlety is is the key. Yeah, so I'm getting some of these are more rough, some of these are less rough. That's a little bit too much. Let me bring that down. And for this, the other thing I'll do is. Uh, We'll take my actual color. Yeah, there we go. So I want to make it like a darker color so I can actually see my. Uh... Oh, that's the other reason my metallic is set to one. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So we're seeing like this strand is a little bit less shiny than that one and so on and so forth. And we're getting the same thing like this one here. Just kind of breaks up the shape a little bit more. Uh, okay, cool. Great. So there's that. So I think my... All right. So next thing this is my roughness. So I'm going to start to... Let's pull this down here. Okay, so I got my roughness. So the next thing I want is, um, I wanna deal with my metallic, because my metallic is actually going to drive my color. Uh, because I want like, um, like kind of like gold-ish pieces here. So I'm gonna use then, uh, to do that, I'm gonna use this V-Box. So I'm gonna use the same idea here. So if we look really closely, each one of these little strands is a solid color, okay? So what I'll do is let's take, I'm gonna use that histogram select. Cause I wanna select each one of those little uh, bands. Blur, I want to, and once again, gotta convert that over to grayscale. So now, if I have my histogram select, I can now select the position that I want. And I can select my bring down my range, and I can bring up my contrast. So I can control exactly which one of these guys I want to be metallic, like so. And I can control how wide that piece of metal is. So I can probably get it down to just one tick, maybe. Pretty close. Uh, if I wanted to, I think I wanted to be a little bit wider than that. Okay. So now what I can do is I'm gonna just gonna take this, right? So your your metallic maps are usually pretty hard black and white. So I'm gonna take this guy. I'm gonna plug it into my metallic slot. So I need to turn that on. So now this guy becomes. Like this part's metallic, this part is not. So if I want more than one of these stripes, 
or if I wanted different stripes. Like actually, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go crazy on this. So I want different stripes for for each each feather. Like this is gonna be the smallest feather. Like this was remember this guy here. If we go back uh, to Houdini. So that guy is is these little guys up here, and then the 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 next one is this one, and the the, the biggest one is this one. Um, I was thinking, I was like, maybe I should cut this, like cut the UVs of this in half, so I get I just get more kind of texture space. Um, but that's kind of like the beauty of working like this. If I did do that, I just have to rebake those images and then bring them back in to uh, and just rehook them up in in substance, and then just kind of like do another round trip. So that might be in the book so i might get a little bit more resolution for each of these guys because they are so big and i'm wasting a fair bit of uh of texture space but uh we'll make it work and we'll make it pretty okay so for this one for this one here i just want like just this little tip uh to be metallic so i'm gonna grab this guy i'm gonna say position push that almost all the way up to the top and bring my range up Okay, so that's gonna be the, the first one, okay? So the second one, I'm just gonna say Control C, Control V. The second one will, uh, let's say, we'll have, it'll be, I think I'll, I'll combine it. So I'll say this one plus one more stripe. So I'm gonna take, for this one, I'm gonna take my range down. And then I'll merge these two together. So I'm gonna say, give me a merge. Actually, no, it's not a merge, it's a blend. So for this one, foreground and background doesn't really matter. And that I want to say add. So it just adds those. So now I can see them both working in tandem. Now I want a bigger, a bit bigger gap in there. So I'm gonna take my range and I'm gonna say add. Like that. And then I'm gonna make one more. So for this one, I want three. So I want one, two, and three. So the little ones just have one little bit on the tip. The medium ones have two, and then the big ones have three. So I'm gonna do Control C, Control V. And I'll just go ahead and do that blending so I can see everything all together. And then I'll move my position down. So I have, uh, so I could just plug this in straight into my metallic, but I would get all of them as the exact same feather. So this goes in here. So now I get this. But what I want, so that's basically like this is basically my third feather here. Um, this is my second feather, and this is my first feather. So I need to recombine these all back together. Let's kind of take this stuff, move it, eh. Move these down. Okay, so first feather, Second feather. So I'm gonna do a blend. And I'm gonna use this uh, this crop, this crop left and right. So I'm gonna say this guy, that guy, and I'm gonna say crop left, 
Actually, no, this needs to be carved right. So that'll give me my second feather. And then I'll do the same thing down here for this guy. So I'll do another blend. And then this one, I believe I should crop left. Or maybe crop right. Yeah, there we go, crop right. And so this will get plugged into there. Sweet. Oh, wait, no. Uh, where's my third one? So it's one, two, three. Yeah, so I have three there now. Perfect. Cool. So that's my metallic. Um, so this is getting a little big, so I will take, and I'm going to put some, uh, some net boxes around this, so I know what's what. So, this one. Okay, so it's frame, so this is, what up? This is roughness. Metal. Metal. And uh, what else? Uh, opacity is fine. Uh, these are all pretty self explanatory. Okay. So off of my rough, off of my metallic now. Now I want my metallic, I want the part of the, the, uh, the feather that is metallic to be one color and the part of the feather that is not metallic to be another color. Now, I already have a mask for this. Like this, this works, this, this works just fine. So there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can do a gradient map. So what a gradient map does is uh, it basically converts, it does the opposite of the grayscale conversion. So it takes, um, it takes grayscale information and turns it into color information. Now. Once again, I'm going to show you the, uh, uh, sir, how do I, uh, sir, how do I learn about Houdini H script expressions? I don't understand them much. Uh, any tips, please? Oh, okay. So, uh, this, this is great. So there is a website called cgwiki.com and it is a maze. It's pretty much how I learned Houdini because I didn't have any, I don't have any formal training in Houdini either. I just kind of figured it out. <laughs> um, but there's not, and I didn't do it on my own. I definitely leaned on the internet a lot. Uh, so see, let me let me look this up real quick. So let's. So for um, for Houdini. Um, Houdini is it's kind of starting to phase out H script and it's using Vex more so um, I go to this website called CG Wiki and there's a whole section on Houdini Vex um, and this is I didn't really learn I didn't really figure out Houdini until I learned Vex because that's really all Houdini is it's just a really complicated wrapper for uh, for Vex code and Vex code is it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like C sharp a little bit but uh, it's very visual. So what I would suggest is going to this website, so I'll just go to the getting started, and just go through all the Houdini stuff. Um, so let's see, quick examples. So if you go through each one of these examples, it basically shows you in very simple form. And this is actually how I kind of learned to, to teach graphics as well, um, because he's uh, the, the guy who runs this, I think his name is Matt Estes, um, he gives you these very, very simple, very easy to understand building blocks. And it's very, uh, is it okay not to know any coding? Um, if you want to be really, really powerful as a CG artist, you should learn a little bit of coding. 
Like, you don't have to be, like... Like, I'm not a programmer, but I know enough coding to, you know, to, to make my life easier. And that's really all it is. It's stuff to make your life easier. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, put this in here. So there's this website, and then along with that, I go, I went through the, where is it? Joy of Vex. Vex. Joy of Vex. So this is like 20 lessons. It's very, very good. Like I, I know people who have never coded a day in their life and they went through this website and then they could actually they could actually put stuff together in, in Houdini. So it's very, very good. Okay, so back to my gradient map. Uh, let's make a gradient. So what this does, if I edit this gradient, it allows me, it basically does the same thing. It takes black and turns it into one color, and it takes white and put, turns it into another color, and then it blends between them. So if I were to take, let's turn this one red, and this is green, once again, going to do it really ugly, and this is blue. So there's my red, green, and blue. Um, so we can use this type of stuff in conjunction. So if I take and I put a levels here, now you can really see. So as if I grab my levels and I take that this middle part, you'll see this red piece shift up and down. So you can really see that color shifting around now. So same thing, I can take my black value now and edit. So now all that is green. Okay. So I can do the same thing here. If I plug this in like that, that's now my color. Now, I only have black and white data, so it's only getting the, uh, the, um, the ends of this gradient, so here. So that's one way to do it. And this is like kind of like the difficulty of uh, of um, no base stuff. There's usually like three or four different ways to do the same thing. It's the other way, I think, is there? I wonder if there's a mix. mix. Channel mixer. Oh, I can just do a blend. Okay. The other way that I can do is I can use this guy as a mask for a blend node. So I can, I'm going to do two constants, constants, and a color. No. Bitmap, blend, blur, curve, directional, distance, gradient, Grayscale, input grayscale, input value, uh, output, sharpen. Ah, here we go, uniform color. That's what I want. So I'm going to make two uniform colors. So one is going to be my uh, non metallic color. So uh, I'm going to make that like a, like a really dark gray. Maybe a little like a like I kind of want like a dark stormy gray, something like that. And then my um, and for this, I want this to be gold. Like so, I'm actually gonna look up the RGB color of gold. And actually, I might there might be uh, let's see uh. Metal. If I remember correctly, there should be like metal presets colors. Uh, data mesh.
Ah, I'll just guess. Or I can look it up. Either one. Um, either way, uh, a gold is going to be like a... It's going to be down in here in this yellow. I just find yellow's really hard because if you go too far, it becomes red. And if you go too far here, you get like this baby puke green. So it's a very thin line that you can actually kind of use. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll blend these together. And then I'll take my metalness and I'll use that as opacity. Sweet. Uh, actually, I have these backwards. So this guy needs to go here. Oops. That needs to go here. That guy needs to go there. So that should give me my base color. And I actually think I like this better. Like it's a little bit cleaner. Um, I can see exactly what's going to where, whereas this I have to like kind of like dive inside of here. So that's that's not too bad. Okay, so, uh, so I'm gonna say so I can see these now. Let's say uh, base color. So now I'm getting, like, you can see that kind of, like, metallic sheen there. Um, so I feel like that's a little bit too, too yellow. For gold. Because gold can go, it can be, like, gold or bronze. It can go to bronze really quick. Oh, here we go. Uh, use to create base metal PBR material with options. Oh, that's base material, not base metal. I could have swore there used to be like, oh, wait, maybe that's it. Ah, here we go. Base color. Metallic roughness. Oh, that's that's the dude diffuse specular glossiness. I could have swore there was like a, a a metallic. Ah, here we go. Uh, PBR metal reflectance. So that is gold. So that's the reflectance value of gold. So aha, there we go. So I can take this and just plug that in. And replace. Should be able to just replace this guy. not letting me plug this in. There we go. Oh yeah, there's gold, there's silver, there's aluminum. Not really much that's different. Copper. Well, I kind of like the copper. It's kind of got like a pink tint to it. Cobalt probably has a little bit of blue and platinum. Yeah, so these these are like kind of like uh, photometric um, values, but I kind of like my artistic value better. And I feel like this one should be a little bit darker. wish I want this to be so this is RGB ah there we go HSV that's what I want so I'm gonna bring this value down a bit I want it to be 
like almost black. Cool. All right. So uh, there's my color. My color is very flat right now. So I think I will also want to let's bring over uh, my this guy, my um, uh, my randomness as well. So for this, uh, let's do let's bring this up here. Uh, actually, I'll just I'll just put another one down here because that, that'll be a that'll be a lot. So let's do that random. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say grayscale conversion, and let's just do, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a kind of brighter version of this, and I'll use this guy as a mask, a lot like we did with our metallic stuff. So just like you've seen me do before, this stuff, it's like, it's the same tricks over and over and over and over again. Okay, so I'm gonna drop an HSV, or HSL, sorry, HSL. Plug that in there. And let's bring our lightness up, and our saturation down. And let's blend these two together. So remember that this one's on top, that one's on bottom, so we're gonna blend. Yeah, so there we go. So we get this kind of uh, uh, variation along our feather. I feel like that's a little bit too strong. So let's bring that opacity down. And let's go ahead and plug that in again. So we'll take all this stuff. So our roughness, our metal. Scoot all that back. Just make myself some room. And then this is going to come up to my base color here. Awesome. Cool. So I kind of want to see this in a different context. So I'm going to say, uh, let's do a, uh, I want to do a cylinder. Let's see what these look like on a cylinder. Just so I can see a little bit of that curve. Yeah, so that curve is really helping out a lot. Getting that metallic sheen on there really nicely. Yeah, it's working out very well. It's working out real well. So let's put a net box around this guy. Let's call this base color. Okay. All right. Uh. I think that's pretty much it for the texturing on this bad boy. So the other thing that I kind of want to look at, so right now I'm looking at the OpenGL view. So this is kind of like your real time shading view. There is an actual path tracer in, um, in uh, so here we're seeing OpenGL 3D view. So if I turn this to iRay, so this is the same render that is in, um, uh, Substance, Substance Painter, so iRay is the same one. So you're getting a little bit richer colors, like your, your reflections are a little bit more true, true to life, so, and your your, uh, your color map comes through a little bit better. So there's that. Put it around in cube so I can see what these look like 
when they're kind of stacked together. So now, so I kind of want to see this. I want to see this on 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 my full feather before I commit to like spitting this out and bringing it back into Houdini or or um, or uh, um, like Unreal Engine or Maya or whatever. So I want to see my actual wing model in here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to spit this guy out. Spit this out here. This geometry out here now one thing that always gets me and what i always forget about is um one uh internally internally houdini um generates your normals for you like it's, it's generating normals uh internally so that it can do it's it's a uh, real time it's, so basically this is another real time rendering engine like basically a lot of people don't really realize this like every viewport you look at is technically a renderer it's just a render that's super super fast like it's turning uh it's turning 3d as a description of a 3d scene into a 2d image on the fly like that's always what it's doing like my viewport's doing it houdini's viewport's doing it blender's viewport's doing it you know it has a couple like render has like uh you know Eevee or whatever it's just doing it so fast that you don't really realize that it's happening but you know that's why it's pretty high quality or low quality is because you know the faster something is the crappier quality it's going to be uh, at least that's how it is now eventually probably everything's going to look you know real world um, but I feel like we're hitting like the upper echelon of like what computers can can do um, I'm probably going to eat those words in the next five years or so but anyway um all right so I want to export this, but I want to make sure that there are normals on this thing so that I can see it once I get it out into another package. Those normals have to exist um, on the model. So, uh, so I have my output FBX here. Um, do I have normals on my actual feather? Is So that looks right. These no, so these are the normals for my feathers. So if I look at these, do, 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 normals. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so my feathers totally have normals. They're all good, right? Um, I don't think what I don't think has normals are is the actual. Um, is, So it looks like I have. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, so it looks like something. Ah, okay. So it looks like this guy has normals on points and not vertices. So we'll just do a quick attribute promote. I'm gonna promote from point to vertex, and I'm gonna promote my normals. So there's my normals, and let's grab these guys. So let's just make sure that um, my different parts of my feathers have the normals on the. Okay, cool. Normals there. That's fine, I think. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Right. Awesome. Okay. So. Um. So now I can I can export this as a two. And I'll just put this in, in render as well, so everything's in the same spot. So, about three high, about three low. Do about three wing. And let's say 
save the disk. So I should see, yeah, there's my wing. Yeah, so there's my wing geometry. Okay, uh, so let's go back to designer. And I want to, I'm gonna say right click, I'm gonna say link 3D mesh, because I can't import a 3D mesh, I can only link it. So I can say link 3D mesh, and let's do render. And so for my wing, uh, let's see, uh, identifier, file path. So that's the file path it came from, shown library is UDIM. It's not a UDIM. Uh, and the metadata, okay, that's cool. So I can just take this 3D wing and drag it into my viewport here. Turn this back to OpenGL. So good. So um, I can't see my back faces for whatever reason. And I, 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 I uh, so uh, generally, um, your your uh, geometry is two sided. I cannot figure out how to make this double sided in in um, in uh, in Substance Designer. So I'm looking at here like my these top feathers are facing the wrong way. I shouldn't be able to see this. Like I should see see my top feathers. So um, over in Houdini, I'm probably going to have to chuck a reverse behind there, behind these here. So unfortunately they look black in Houdini, but they should look proper in Yeah, they should look proper in Designer. Yeah, that looks more correct. I think they're still not shading exactly how I would like. Let me go ahead and let's just throw a normal behind this. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Cool. All right, so um, so now I just need to uh, assign these guys to this guy. So what I can do is not having anything selected, I right click and I can say view outputs in 3D view. There we go. That's uh, that's the wing. That's, that's the wing works, and all this stuff because I'm uh, uh so I needed this. I, I wanted to see uh, it, see it in eye ray because I was getting um the little tip in my um, opacity. So now we have that. We have these three different types of of feathers. So we have our little feathers, our big feathers, our medium sized feathers, and our big feathers. So now it's our direction time, right? So I think we'll see a little bit. Of, uh, of this gold up in here. So what I'm going to do, go back to here. I think I want to line these histogram selects up. Because all this is just pretty much just like masking and stuff. So let's uh, give this a little bit wider range.
I think I just went too far on this top one. Yeah, I like that. And then also what I can do is, uh, let's see, I kind of want to, maybe, maybe I can fade it in just a bit. Yeah, I think I want that like, softening a little bit, like it feel, makes it feel a little bit more organic. Just a little bit of softening in there. Maybe not on all, maybe just, just the end of the, the feather. So I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna let this resolve and just so I can see what it looks like. I probably will never get this close to this. Um, it'll probably be something like this, maybe. Pretty nice. Okay, so let's go, uh, let's, go back, let's go back to here and let's do another one of these. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, grab this, and go up to a mirror. And let's see if we can look at both of these. So it's like wing, wings, plural. out so, 3d mesh and my wings here open drag those in and then right click and say view output in 3d view Right, pretty cool. Digging this. I like it. Feeling pretty cool. Now, when I make this bigger, my render is going to take a little bit longer because it's, it's a bigger image, but uh, yeah, not too bad, not too shabby. And the great thing about this is, is now I can. Um, my base color maybe instead of like that black let's see what this looks like if I do like a, like a lighter blue it's a different feel much more angelic feel overall Let's try maybe into a red, reddish, and see what that gives me. I don't like that. I like the, cool, the, the blue with the gold. Put it like a brown. Ooh, I, I like that. I actually like the brown. 
And so this is what I really love about these type of work. It's like once you're done, or not done, once you have it set up, like you can you have like a lot of options, like a lot of options to 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 get to get to where you want to be. Um, and like so like you can go to your art director and be like, oh, you know, I want this, you know, uh, we want this. Uh, so I can show this, like, oh, this is too saturated overall. Like, it's way too saturated. So I can, all right, fam, we can just drop that saturation and you get, you know, I like where that's at. Oh, uh, is, uh, I think I'm not getting enough, uh, enough of that, that normal map coming through. On, on my big uh on my big wings on my big uh feathers here so i'm gonna drop that let's put this back to open geo and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come up here to my well map and i'm gonna do i'm gonna like up the intensity on just this guy um so up the basically the same way as i did with my hsv down here i'm going to do that with a normal map intensity so i'm going to say normal normal map intensity oh i might actually also uh augment my color map with some curvature data that might actually be advantageous okay so i'm gonna crank this intensity way up well maybe not that far because this guy is like so not intense um so i'm gonna do the same thing as i did before is uh take and do a blend Actually, I think I was right the first time. I want this guy to be on top. That guy to be on bottom. And then I'll crop from the left, revealing... Actually, I was right the first time. So I'm making this guy way more intense. And so I'll take this. Oh, that one that one can that one can be left. Like that's fine. Because that's generating the, the, the occlusion map. So that's fine. It's to keep more relief on my big feathers. And then, um, let's see, what else can I do here? Uh, let's do, while I'm here, I got about, I got about eight minutes left. So let's see if we can grab, so I'm going to do an edge, uh, not edge detect, normal. Normal. Curvature of Sorbel. So it takes in a normal map and it spits out a curvature. Okay. So this gives me a curvature. Um, I can, now my curvature is probably going to look a lot like my, um, my normal, but, uh, let's see, let's see, let's bring both of these in. Yeah, 
that's not too bad. Yeah, so I can use this as a mask, another mask. And I can either darken or lighten this again. So we're going to do that same HSL trick. So tab HSL. I don't really know what I want to lighten it or darken it, so I'll just lighten it and then I'll do a blend. keep my foreground and blend it in my background with my sword belt oh yeah that's nice that's nice just gives me a little bit of of edging on the thing and then i can just bring bring that opacity down a little bit so it's, i just want just a little just a hint of that kind of baked into my baked into my color Place this guy here with this new one here. Yeah, so now I'm just getting a little bit, just a teensy bit more of that edging in there, just to kind of accentuate, accentuate that wing. So I think there might be something going wrong with my. Uh, feathers because when I load my wing, they're not interpenetrating like that. But that is something I will deal with in uh, offline. Yeah, there's something going on with my my conversion there. Actually, where is it? Yeah, we'll see. We'll look at that. We'll, we'll see what's going on with that. But yeah, so yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it for Wednesday night, morning, evening, stream, whatever. Uh, uh, not a deep dive into into substance, substance designer, but a, a pretty cool dive. And it's not like I didn't like I use like maybe you know six nodes. I just used them over and over and over again. So I used a uh, let's see, I used um, uh, levels a lot. I used lots of blends an HSL node. Um, what else did we use in here? Uh, we used a normal intensity and a uh let's see yeah and a curvature and that's really it like that but that's that's the only things i use i just use them in kind of like different ways so it's all about coloring and masking and uh black and white values like controlling figuring out how to control those values oh and a histogram select uh and a grayscale conversion so not a lot i mean considering how much stuff and this is i think this is the thing that's really um Uh, that's the thing that really um, I think is intimidating about like when you start to get into this type of work It's like there's so much stuff right like we were talking about like how like whether you need to go to college like go to like You know should he leave India or, or, or whatnot? Um, there's so much information. There's just uh, so much information it just within here There's so many nodes and everything like that I'm dealing with right now I'm teaching myself Unreal Engine, and it's very hard. Like, it's like there's so much. Uh, it's just like the programs are just so big. So um, I call it eating the food that's in front of you. Uh, I read a book called Feeling Good by Dr. Uh, Burns, Michael Burns, I think his name is. And he's got this one chapter in there about getting things done. And a lot of times when we when we procrastinate, we don't want to get things done. It's like, it's like oh, man, I'm never going to be able to finish all that stuff. I'm never going to be able to finish this. I'm never going to be able to finish that. Actually think about it and then like like if you think about it like uh like if you have to eat all the food you're gonna eat your entire life you will never you would never eat anything right eat the food that's right. it's like oh, I'll eat the meal I'll eat the next meal I'll eat the next meal so same thing with trying to do stuff right you 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 do the first thing that's 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 come that's closest to you don't worry about anything else down the road just do that thing and then do the next thing and then do the next thing and then do the next thing and then before you know it you're you're almost done so that's the stream for today I'm Brian Bentley this is a stream for cgspectrum.com. Uh, for all your modeling needs, go to cgspectrum.com slash 3D-modeling. Thank you so much. 
for coming. I will see you next week. Wash your hands, be good to others, and be good to yourself. I will see you later. Thank <laughs> you.